Hello everyone, and welcome to a very first top three performances for the five red lights. My name's Aaron, and I usually do the five red lights podcast. And today we're going to count down the top three performances from the British Grand Prix. So let's dive on in. So starting with number three, I'm going to go with Daniel Ricciardo uh, in the Renault. Uh, it was a solid but unspectacular qualifying. Uh, it put him eighth on the grid. Uh, slightly familiar position for, for Renault this season. They'd had a, a trio of uh, eight place finishes in the opening three rounds. Um, and he actually had a really, really good start. He was on the soft tyres um, while Norris and well, Stroll was definitely on the, on the mediums. Um, but he got ahead of Norris and Stroll on the opening lap following Carlos Sainz through. So he, he got, got himself some good track position there. Uh, he held on to it all the way through the race. Um, although he did lose uh, position to Norris after the second safety car restart. And then he had his, uh, his little, little uh, battle with Roman Grosjean, which he described as sketchy, the uh, late move from Roman. But he found a way through past the Haas and closed up on the McLarens again. He did a really good job in keeping his tyres together. Uh, the, the Renault doesn't have as much downforce as the McLaren, which kind of played into the uh, problem that Science had. Norris did a better job keeping his tyres in good shape. Well, Science was running in clear air for the most part. Um, and then he, so, so Ricardo managed to keep himself in play and he actually took uh, the position back from Norris with a really, really nice move, which wasn't actually shown on the TV feed. Uh, you have to find it on F1 TV on, on the onboards. And he, it's a late dive down the inside into Stowe, uh, which we come to expect from Mr. Dive Bomb, Danny Rick. Um, and then to, to finish fourth in the end, after Sainz had his tyre failure, he was actually closing in on Norris and he was only a few seconds behind at the, at the flag. So, you know, if Hamilton hadn't, Obviously, if Hamilton had had to stop the car, he would have been promoted to third. But there's every chance if the race was a lap longer, he would have finished uh, ahead of Leclerc um, in the Ferrari. So uh, Daniel Ricciardo gets third place. Moving on to our second place, I'm going for Pierre Gasly. He's car kind of quietly going under the radar with a very very good season and yesterday's race was pretty much an encapsulation of that so he had really good pace through the race uh started um in the midfield moved himself through with some really good overtakes he came through he passed sebastian vettel i know that ferrari engine isn't as anywhere near as good as it was last year but still to put a move on a four-time world champion uh, around the outside at stowe uh, and hold it together, even though Sebastian squeezed him as much as he is probably allowed to, and maybe a touch more. Um, that that shows the skill and the quality that he has, and his, his overtake on Stroll. And I think Stroll was just sort of stuck, and then he he lost his way, and maybe the car wasn't uh, performing as well as he as he would like it to to have done. But it was an excellent move. Uh, into Abbey. You don't see many overtakes into Abbey because it's so fast, but he got such a good run down the uh, pit straight into Abbey Corner and he, he sent it, you know, <laughs> he, he did send it uh, and it, it warranted the uh, the year baby uh, radio message, which was quite nice. And it's good to see Pierre having a good run of form because he he struggled with Red Bull and this is, this is good for him. So the, the seventh place in the end after the Bottas and Sainz tyre failures uh, is really, really good for him. And, and Alpha Tauri are doing a really good little job there, as you'd expect. They're, they've always been a solid runner and they've got a really good driver with Pierre Gasly. There's a, may, maybe that is just his scenario. He flourishes in, in that lower expectation midfield team where you can grab the minor points and the, the odd podium rather than being in the big boy team. But we'll see. So second place in our top three performances for Pierre Gasly. And moving on to our top performer of the weekend, it's not Lewis Hamilton, despite the fact that he carried the car home with three wheels. I'm giving it to Charles Leclerc. Uh, the Monegasque did an amazing job. So just to put it into comparison, Vettel 
yeah, he lost a, lo a load of time um, Friday with his pedals being loose and just general uh, lack of running time because they had to keep fixing it. And Charles really made the most of this low drag Ferrari spec that they brought. Um, so they, they trimmed out the wing to speed them up on the straights because Silverstone has become such a power circuit. That's vital. And they they were able then to, in a way, guard against having a similar problem to Mercedes. They 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 loaded on the downforce and tried to maximize their speed through the corners where their, their car is excelling this year. Leclerc and Vettel could have easily run into those problems as well because they don't have the they don't they don't their car isn't quite as uh kind to its tires, perhaps. But that, that qualifying lap to get him P4 on the grid, that was a lot higher than anyone expected. Vettel only managed 10th. Uh, and I think going into the weekend, it would have been expected to see the two Ferraris 6th, 7th at best, maybe, because of the, the, the power, the power strong nature of, of Silverstone at the moment, given the current uh, regulations. But that was an amazing lap. It was only a 10th behind Max Verstappen. And he got through on the mediums, which shows you just the, the quality that that boy has. He, If you give him the right car, of course, he is going to be a world champion. And I, I strongly believe that now as such a young driver. Obviously, he got promoted to P3 uh, at the flag, but he kept his nose clean. And the fact that he was not quick enough to challenge Mercedes or Verstappen meant that he could constantly run in free air, run at his own pace, manage the tyres. Um, and he was quick enough to fend off signs and the McLarens and Renaults behind. So while Sebastian was struggling in the midfield, and I think there was some mitigating circumstances for Sebastian on that, um, Charles led the way for Ferrari, delivered. Um, and this is what he's going to have to do. He's going to have to be team leader. And next season, Science is going to be trying to bed himself in. And he might have the odd off day. Charles is going to have to deliver these performances week in, week out, race in, race out. Um, an excellent performance from him. And for me, the top performance of the weekend. Absolutely outstanding from him. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, like the video if you agree or disagree, even. Uh, let us know who you think the top three performances are we're from at the British Grand Prix this weekend. Um, and check out the Five Red Lights podcast. It'll be coming out later this week. We'll be having a look back at some of the talking points from the British Grand Prix uh, in a little bit more depth. And we'll be looking ahead to the Formula One 70th Anniversary Grand Prix <laughs> held at Silverstone this weekend. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to our website and to our social media pages. So have a look on our website and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and listening everyone and I'll see you in another video. Bye!